Hi, HipKit friends. I'm excited to be here with you today, guest designing for HipKit this month. And I have used one of the beautiful cut files from the June 2022 release. And I have cut it in several layers. So I cut the cut file just using the contour tool with a solid background. And now I am adding color to just the plain shape that I got in the background. So I used my Cricut, I use a Cricut software uh, to do that and to create my layers. And it's very simple. <laughs> I watched lots of YouTube videos uh, long ago to learn how to do that. And now I use the tools all the time to make layers for cut files. So here I am using Distress Oxides on one half of the butterfly cut file that I'm using. Uh, because I'm going to be putting solid paper or one of the pot patterned papers on the right side of the butterfly. So I'm getting my inks ready, getting that background ready to be able to add a little bit of more mixed media to that. So you could see there a few seconds ago, I did add some water droplets because distress oxides are water soluble. You can add water straight to that ink uh, and it will pick up some of that color, so it gives it some nice texture there, or visual te visual interest there. And so now I am using one of the other layers that I cut, just the body of the butterfly, and I'm adding some Distress Oxide to the body, and I'm gonna be adding um, some glitter to that as well here in a second. So I'm trying to make sure everything matches. Here I'm adding the patterned paper that's going to be on the right side, making sure everything fits and looks right, <laughs> and matching my ink colors to that patterned paper. And now I'm using the left half of that cut file, uh, the way that it comes when you buy the cut file, so you're, you get that white layer. I am using that, I cut it on textured white cardstock, and I am using it as a stencil. So I'm using just texture paste. I use Ranger texture paste uh, is one of my favorites. I use several different kinds, but that's probably one of my favorites. And I am using that through that cut file as it's acting as the stencil. And here in a second, you're gonna see me lift that up and it's gonna leave all of that texture paste behind. So I've layered that on and here I'm lifting that cut file off. And what's left behind is all of the pattern that was that was in that cut file, which is really cool. So here I'm just taking off some of that extra texture paste, just showing you a way to save some of your materials. So I'm just taking that off and putting it back in the jar of texture paste because I don't want to waste any little bit of that that I have. So now here what I'm doing is I'm adding Glimmer Mist, so Nuvo Glimmer Mist to the body of the butterfly because I kind of want it to look different and have um, a shiny body and have a little bit different texture than the rest of that cut file is going to have. So I'm just layering that on pretty generously. I want it to look <laughs> really shiny and beautiful. So I'm just making sure it's evenly covered and then I'm going to pick it up um, because it is a glitter paste. It is kind of chunky so on the sides I'm just kind of taking off a little bit of that excess. You can see me doing that there with my fingers. And then I'm going to set that off to the side to let it dry. I've let it dry a little bit and here I'm gonna go ahead and add the patterned paper and adhere that down so I did use um, Vicki Booten's foundations smooth white cardstock to do my mixed media on uh, to cut that butterfly out with and that's why it's super flat and didn't warp when I put all of that mix, mixed media on it because if you use just a plain cardstock if you're putting a lot of wet mediums on it, it will warp, but because I'm using a mixed media cardstock, it doesn't do that. So here's how that um, cut file is looking, all put together. I am just running my finger along. It's almost dry, but not all the way, so I was running my finger along that to push down any little bits <laughs> that were a little bit thicker. I like to flatten that out just a little bit with my finger. So now I'm going back very lightly with uh, ink blending brushes. I like to use waffle flower ink blending brushes. I'm going back with a shade darker or a few shades darker for that navy, but uh, of each of those distress oxide colors. So I'm just going really lightly. I really just want it to be on the texture paste. So 
sometimes I will lay a stencil back down over um, the, the texture paste that I've put through the stencil, but because I was using that cardstock as the stencil, it didn't hold up. So I couldn't lay it back down to do this part, but um, it worked just as well to <laughs> kind of blend in some of those inks over that texture paste. I'm not trying to change the color of the background, just lightly covering that white. <clears throat> So there you can see I've added the colors kind of following along with the colors that I already had there. And now I'm using the Tim, Tim Holtz Distress Oxide or Paper Distressor to distress the edges of that butterfly. And in those parts that were really hard to get to, I used some scissors to distress the edges. The body of my butterfly is now dry, so I'm adding it back to the center. And I thought that navy was just a little bit dark, so I went and added some water. That's the beauty of a water-soluble ink like Distress Oxide. I can go back even after it's been dry for a long time. That was overnight. Um, it had dried, and still the next day I could go back with water and take off some of that ink, so that's really cool. Here I'm adding, using uh, Ranger's Liquid Pearls to add some color and texture to the cut file. And this is, I'm not adding a ton, I'm just adding some details like to the center of those flowers. Because I was using the negative of that stencil, I did wanna add a little bit more detail just in the open spaces, but like in the centers of the flowers and some in between some of the leaves. I just went and added a little bit of uh, the liquid pearls to give it some dimension. And in the close-up photos, you'll be able to see that a lot better. It's kind of hard to see here on video. So here I've got three photos from a day we spent at the beach with family. This was at our lunch. Um, and I'm just kind of playing with the placement of where I'm going to want that cut file on the background and where I want the photos. So I'm going to go back to where I originally had them kind of off to the right side of the butterfly. And I'm going through now from some of the embellishments from the July kits. These are the fabric, uh, the fabric banner pieces, pennant pieces. They're beautiful. <laughs> they have great texture and great color, very vivid colors to go along with those patterned papers that are in the July kit. So I'm picking out the ones that have the colors that match best with my photos. So. You can kind of see I've got navies and oranges and turquoise uh, and a floral on my shirt in, one, in the photo. So I wanted uh, those to pick colors that matched. Here I picked one of the chipboard pieces from uh, the, title, the title chipboard uh, sheet. I used the word fun and the colors weren't exactly uh, the right the right shades for uh, the pieces that I had pulled out to use on this layout. So I did use the liquid pearls to just paint that a little bit. You kind of can still see the pattern through it, but it gives it, makes it the right color. Uh, and I will be adding, you'll see me a couple of times, I think, uh, add some of the liquid pearls to it. I used it just kind of like a paint, that liquid pearl medium. And here I'm backing my photos with two of the beautiful patterned papers, a blue patterned paper and an orange patterned paper from the July kits. And so I've put the butterfly, I've got it where I think I want it, so I'm just going around to trace where I have it so that I can go back and add some more Distress Oxide to the background. And this is gonna be a very light addition to or a light element to the background it's not supposed to stand out too much just kind of <laughs> help the butterfly look like it's flying through the sky so I've got the blue around the butterfly and then some yellow up the top <clears throat> here I'm adding another layer of liquid pearls to that title as it's drying you can you know go back and add some more layers uh, just to make it a little more opaque I'm ready to adhere that butterfly down and I did mostly center my adhesive in the center of that butterfly so that I could bend up some of the edges and I 
know, where my photos are going to go. So I'm going to pull that back up and add a little bit more mixed media to the bottom of the butterfly. So I am using a Shimmers spray. It's mustard seed. It is very shimmery and beautiful. So I'm adding that down to the bottom almost to kind of look like it's dripping just down the page a little bit. So I just want it poking out from underneath the photos. And I did dry up the excess. I don't want it to be super dark. Just wanted it to have one more little pop of color, making sure I like where the photos are before I adhere those down. And because I am putting it on top of the ink and the texture paste and all of that from the butterfly, I did use dry adhesive just to hold it for right now and then wet adhesive to hold it long term. Whenever you're gluing on top of other mediums, sometimes it's hard to get it to stick long term. So I did add some wet adhesive. Now I'm using those banner pieces, the fabric uh, banner pieces, pennants to um, add some embellishment down to the bottom of the layout under the photos. So I did use a piece of twine that I had from my stash. There was twine included with the these embellishments, but I wanted it to kind of have a little another little pop of color. So the twine that was there was a very creamy color. So I'll save that for some of the other pieces that I have left of that, of the pennants. But I used the twine here and I just added a little adhesive and folded them over. So you'll see I have those there I do end up taking that navy one off I thought it was a little too dark for the other colors that I had in the layout so you'll see me here I am taking it off and I'm gonna add one of the other pieces that's a lighter color so at first I thought I was gonna use the floral but it was right next to a floral where I already had the rest of them adhered down so there was one that was a, a white with some uh, some black stripes was a little too white so I just added a little bit of I'm adding a little bit of ink it's because they're fabric they take the ink really well um, and really beautifully so never be afraid to embellish your embellishments and make them your own they're beautiful as they are but it's really fun to make them your own and make them coordinate with your layout even better so here I'm going through and pulling out some pieces looking to see what I want to use this was another beautiful patterned paper this floral uh, from the July kit so I am gonna be fussy cutting lots of flowers out I won't make you watch all of that because it is very boring to watch me fussy cut but I did fussy cut out some floral clusters and then also some little teeny tiny pieces of florals and I am adding a cluster of those up above the photo to the right and then I'm going to be doing it again down uh, to the left bottom of my cluster of photos. I do use craft foam to layer the flowers once I've cut them all out. And you'll see I skipped ahead a whole bunch because I didn't want you to have to watch me cut all those out. But I do have the clusters down on the bottom left. And now my title is dry. So what I'm gonna do is I wanna add a little bit of texture to that. So I'm gonna take that chipboard title and put it in, um, this is the Texture Boutique, Sizzix Texture Boutique. So I just used one of the checkered folders that I had to match the checks in the patterned paper above. And it's hard to see here, but in the close-up photos, you'll see a really good close-up photo of that of that chipboard title. I love the texture that that adds. And like I said earlier, you never, you should never be afraid to make your embellishments fit your layout just perfectly. So they were good as they started and even better when you, when you make them all coordinate together. So here, one of the orange uh, flowers that was on the embellishment sheet, I have added some glimmer some glimmer paste too and then down below the banner on the yellow all the areas that's that are yellow I went and added glacier paste so the glacier paste is more opaque it's still you can still see the color popping out from below it for sure but it's a little bit more opaque than the glimmer mist that I used like on the body of the butterfly 
and that just adds some shimmer and shine and it kind of lightens up that yellow that was really bright <clears throat> and here I'm going and adding some liquid pearls to the centers of my flowers you'll be able to see those really well in the close-ups as well I love to embellish paper flowers <laughs> with different layers of things to help them stand out and then the last thing I'm going to do here is I'm using just white acrylic paint that I watered down with a little bit of water and I'm going to add some white splatters around my embellishment clusters and then up kind of above the butterfly as well. And I just use a scratch piece of um, paper to block my photos so I don't get white too much on those on the faces in my photos. I do go back with a paintbrush and add just some more dots and here are some close-up photos I hope you enjoyed watching the process and that you'll check out the June July 2022 hip kit club kits they are absolutely beautiful and I hope you have a wonderful creative day thanks for watching bye bye